Hello again and welcome back. Now we will be talking about the primer dimers that sometimes can form when you're trying to run a PCR. So what are primer dimers? Let me show what I mean here. Well, what I mean is that, uh, that on top of those schmears that you typically get from your primers, uh, you get a discrete band but at a very low molecular weight, maybe corresponding to something like uh, 50 bases or so, and it's not at the size of your expected PCR product, that is typically higher, um, but still it's a discrete band. That's the primer dimers that are forming as a result of primers that would be annealing to each other. And that will compete with the amplification of the template DNA that you actually mean and that's why you are having trouble. So let's have a look at what can happen. Well, if you want to avoid that, you need to design your primers in a way that they won't do what dimerizing primers would do and that is to kneel to each other at their three prime ends. So if this is the five prime end of your first primer, three prime end, five prime end and uh, three prime end, what happens is that these ends, these three prime ends of your primers will find each other because they are complementary. Maybe you have been designing this to be a G and this to be a C, maybe this is now an A, this is a T and perhaps this is another G and this is another C. So that kind of scenario will lead to primer dimerization because if then the polymerase comes in, what happens is that the primers will be filled in like that and from now on this is a wonderful template for all of your subsequent uh, reaction steps. So now this will be amplified and this will be in competition with the, um, the PCR product that you're really trying to amplify. So what you need to do in the first place try to design your primers in a way that they would not contain such an overlap at the three prime end. Now importantly, you not only design your primers not to anneal to each other, but you also design them not to anneal to themselves. So let's assume these are two copies of the same primer, again the five prime ends being here. What will happen if your primer ends with a palindromic sequence like G, A, T, C? And the other copy of the primer will also end by G, A, T, C. Can you see what happens? Well, of course, they will be annealing to each other as well. That's why you must avoid palindromic sequences at the three prime ends of your primers. Otherwise, primer dimers will form again, not between different primers, but within the same primer. So two copies of the same primer will dimerize again in that way, will anneal to each other and will then be filled in. And this again will compete with the real PCR product that you want to get. So that's something that you need to avoid and if accidentally it happened to you, just throw them away and uh, get new primers uh, because otherwise uh, the reaction won't work properly. Now apart from that, it can happen that you still get primer dimers even though there's no obvious sequence that would provide you with uh, an opportunity of the primers to anneal to each other. Well, why would that happen? Well, it can happen because you were too slow in carrying your pre-setup reaction to the PCR machine. Because you know, even if the homology is very limited and even if, say, well, maybe two nucleotides can anneal to each other, this will still happen as long as you're working at fairly low temperatures, as long as you're working at room temperature, for instance. Then even such a dimer might be stable enough to hold for some time. And the important thing to remember is that even though your tuck polymerase 
has its optimum for polymerization at about 72 degrees Celsius, it will still work to some extent at room temperature. And you know, it's nothing to just fill in this strand. This is maybe 20 bases or so. That's nothing for tuck polymerase. So even at a suboptimal temperature, like room temperature, this fill-in reaction will still happen. And once it did happen, just imagine what will happen if these strands then get separated during the first PCR cycle when you do your denaturation. Well, then naturally the primers will bind and they can now bind for the full length because the, perfect is, uh, the template is now perfect and now the uh, reaction will go on and again this kind of template will always compete out the template that you really wanted to amplify. So what's the consequence of that? Well, the consequence of that is that while setting up your reaction, you need to do this at a temperature that is too low for tuck polymerase to work efficiently. Well, a good temperature for that is zero degrees Celsius. So on ice, ice, that's what you want to use for setting up your reaction. And then you don't take those tubes out of the eyes and then carry them to the coffee room, maybe have a cup of coffee, chat with your neighbor and stuff. No, no, no. You keep that on ice. And even before you set up re the reaction, you already went to that PCR machine and programmed it and allowed it to heat up to 95 degrees. And then you take your box with the ice and your uh, PCRs that you have being set up and then you quickly take it from the eyes and put it right to the 95 degrees because there at 95 degrees those di primer dimers won't form such unstable uh, hybridizations, won't be possible at a high temperature. So the idea is that you set up the reaction on ice, then take it to the high temperature quickly but avoid room temperature where the dimers can still form and where the polymerase still has some activity to fill them in, thereby providing the perfect template. In that way, you can avoid a large number of primer dimers already. What if it still doesn't help? Especially if you are trying to set up some multiplex PCR, that is a PCR uh, that would amplify several products simultaneously, this may still be not enough. You may still have some hybridization of the primers that you can't really avoid. So how can, what can you do in such a case? Well, one idea is the real hot start, what we call hot start. Hot start literally means that you first heat up your PCR machine to 95 degrees, then you put in the tube that contains all the PCR components except the tuck polymerase. So you haven't added the tuck polymerase yet, but everything else is in the tube, and you first heat this up to 95 degrees, and only then you open the lid again you throw in the tuck polymerase, you close the lid, you close the lid of the machine and then you let the reaction start. This is a convenient and very cheap way to avoid primer dimers and also to avoid other unspecific reaction products. However, it's prone to contamination and it's also difficult to really get the conditions exactly the same way for all the tubes in your machine because you need to add the polymerase to each and every tube. That's why the classical hot start is still not an ideal although cheap method to avoid non-specific primer dimerization. But what you can do instead is something that I would like to call a virtual hot start. Virtual hot start and the, the idea there is to keep the tuck polymerase, let this be the tuck polymerase, uh, to keep that inactive until the reaction really starts. So how can you do that? Well, some people like to use an antibody, something like that, that would bind to tuck polymerase and not just anywhere, it would bind to the active center of tuck. In that way, it would keep tuck inactive 
However, if you heat this up to 95 degrees during the first PCR cycle, what you get is a, um, a denaturation of the antibody and in, under such circumstances, TAC will now be free to do its job. The same idea holds true for uh, temperature sensitive chemical modifications. Chemical modifications uh, those would again come off at the high temperature of the first PCR cycle and then allow TAC polymerase to do its job, but not before while you're setting up the reaction. And the third possibility to do this virtual hot start is to have the TAC polymerase in wax beads. So the wax will, would also melt only once you heat up the enzyme and then the um, uh, convection, that is the, um, the turnover in the fluid that uh, is a result of heating up, uh, would also mix the reaction. So you don't need to be too concerned about the mixing. The TAC polymerase will then still reach uh, its targets and amplify your product. That's the third possibility to do a virtual hot start. All of that is commercially available. It's not cheap, uh, but sometimes uh, it can uh, help you if you really find no other way to avoid primer dimers through a hot start. Well, that's about what I can tell you about primer dimers and how to avoid them. We will have the next lecture on other non-specific PCR products. So see you then. Thank you.